now that both gorgo and liu che have landed on the battlefield and the rise of kingdoms community has started to test them out i think it's time that i update you guys on what the best open field marches are in rise of kingdoms because i haven't made a video like this since april which means we completely skipped over the release of huo so honestly a lot has changed over the last couple of months so in this video we're going to go over the best three army lineup for those of you that are only running one pair for each troop type that is going to be newer players or maybe free to play players and then we're going to go over the best five army lineup and finally we'll go over a couple of different options for the best seven army lineup in rise of kingdoms but first what's going on guys cheers all right let's just jump right into it and first let's go over the best three army lineup in my opinion first of all we got to talk about cpo with luce i think if you're building an infantry army in rise of kingdoms today and you're starting from scratch i think this is the best army that you can go with it has double aoe on both commanders it has a really powerful health the debuff on CPO. There's a couple of ways to get instant proc damage on both of these commanders. And we have a ton of stats just across the board with attack, defense, and health. We got some March speed sprinkled in there as well. Both of these commanders are exceptionally good in their own rights. And really just slapping them together is a no brainer move. And you're going to really like the results that you get next. Let's talk about cavalry. And I think if we're only going to build one cavalry army, it's still going to be Nevsky Joan. Now, one of the things about Huo at first people were saying oh well he's not as great as Nevsky and I would say that from a stats perspective and from being like super well-rounded I would say that that is true I would say that Nevsky is a safer investment than Huo but when it comes to farming kill points and just straight up damage per second I think Huo is honestly surprisingly good and as time is going on more and more people are realizing that Huo is a killing machine okay so if you ended up going with Huo Joan then honestly that's probably fine and we're going to talk about that later in the video but if you want to play it safe I think that the Nevsky Joan is tried and true there's nothing wrong with this pair the damage factor is great on both of them the double AoE with Joan is obviously insane and of course the defense debuff on Nevsky is exceptional so Nevsky Joan stands the test of time it is tried and true and if you're running it you can keep running it and feel really good about that and finally for the one archer march we're gonna go with Boudica and Juge Leong again as a single archer march I think that this pretty much covers all of your bases this has not changed over the last couple of months ever since Juge Leong came into the game he has been exceptionally good behind Boudica her single target damage and debuff on the active skill is amazing plus she brings a little bit of March speed and a bunch of stats to really just help Juge Leong pop off in the open field and he does a lot of the heavy lifting from there the circular AoE the double AoE with the fourth skill on him he's got a ton of health it's just incredible they both can shrug off silence effects if you do actually have the expertise Boudica Prime I think this is hands down the best single Archer pairing in the entire game now like I said earlier if you're a free-to-play player or you are a new player to the game and you really only have a select amount of equipment and you're really just struggling to scrape things together for that open field fight you should really stick to this do not consider branching out to a fourth and fifth army until you really know that you have good equipment and decent armaments that you can put on those armies because really I think running these three like you've really got the best of the best if this is what you're running with and I think all three of these armies can perform really well but how does the three army lineup change if you want to go to a five army lineup which in my opinion is kind of the gold standard okay you should really be eventually trying to get your hands on five good armies okay seven is for the whales and we're going to talk about that later okay but most people aren't going to need that really what matters the most in my opinion is the best five army lineup so of course in this instance you are going to break up the Scipio and the Luce I think that both of them are so good that if you want to run more than one infantry army which as you already can tell I think you should be running more than one infantry army if you're running five you gotta split them up okay and I think when you do that the answer here is pretty clear the Guan Scipio is tried and true it just ha has the double AoE the silence is still pretty solid in my last KVK I ran Guan Scipio and in the open field it was performing pretty much as good as my Nevsky Joan now of course it takes a lot longer to get to the battlefield so it's in the battle less often but from a trades perspective I think that this pair is still trading really really well but then that begs the question who do you pair with Liu Che well there's two answers that I really want to go over okay and the first one that we covered here on the channel and I said this from day one the moment that I realized it was Sargon I think Sargon is a really solid pairing for Liu Che 
I will say that it might not be the best pairing for Liu Che, and it's certainly the best pairing on paper for Liu Che, but it's not without its faults okay and we're gonna dive into this a little bit deeper because i think that if you were paying attention to the 1960 uh the, the kvk with 1v and everything which i'm sure many of you were uh you're gonna notice that a lot of people actually were running Tarek with luce instead and i want to go over a little bit as to why that might be and i actually think that it could be a better pairing now honestly Sargon versus Tarek is a really interesting debate for me I think if you are a Giga Chad mega well then there is really no question you should just be using Tarek I think it makes sense the way that you as a mega well are playing like you want the Tarek because you're focused on something completely different than free to play players low spenders or whatever the difference between Tarek and Sargon like their kits are actually quite different I mean they're both single target damage both of them are infantry so really they, they do bring a lot of different things to the table but it definitely changes when you have better gear and really good armaments okay and what do I mean by this well first of all Tarek is only bringing you attack in the open fields and you have a conditional March speed bonus of 10%. If you look at Sargon, he has a mixture of a little bit of attack, a little bit of defense and 20% of health. So his stats are spread across with an emphasis on infantry health, which is the most important. And if you're a free to play player or a low spender, infantry health is probably going to be what you need the most of. Okay. Also in the open field, he has more March speed than Tarek. Just objectively, he is actually just faster and there's no condition here. And March speed is extremely important for infantry okay now you can split hairs and you can look at like stacking the odd debuff and the instant proc damage here and all this other stuff comparing that to the 15 percent all damage and then the rage reduction over three seconds they're both bringing different things to the table so why are we debating which one is better well here's the thing in my mind it, it comes down to to one thing okay are you fighting in dot mode and if the answer is yes Tarek is the answer and if you don't even know what I'm talking about then Sargon is probably the answer okay and the reason for this is because if you're fighting in dot mode uh you you probably have a really good understanding of when you should be engaging and disengaging with different enemies in the open fields and if you're playing in dot mode and, and of course you could do this without dot mode but I think most players that are really serious about open field fighting they they at this point are using dot mode especially in massive open field brawls it's just way easier to see stuff the reason I even bring it up is because using dot mode is just an indication that you're going to understand what I'm talking about but Tarek has the advantage of an instant skill shot of 2200 or 2500 if he's surrounded or if you're insane and you actually expertise him which I I don't think you should expertise him just for open field I don't think I'm going to okay but if you did that's actually great it turns out really good the instant proc damage here is going to just in the long run perform better than the five damage over time hits from Sargon even with Liu Che where you have the possibility of dealing additional 500 damage factors because the expertise on Liu Che gives you the chance of doing an extra normal attack which we've already talked about this a ton on the channel so if you guys didn't know uh, the extra normals will get you extra damage from Sargon the problem with this is um it, you know again if you're if you're not using dot mode and you're fighting relatively slow you're staying connected to a target for a long time um that's that's not really probably the best open field strategy but sometimes if you're playing on mobile right like it's it's you know for those of us that play this game all the time it's easy to forget that this is a mobile game right um but if you're playing on mobile and like maybe it's really hard to to do like the jumping from one to another in the open field uh, and you stay connected a long time I think Sargon is going to be better and if you are a free-to-play or low spender who really struggles to get a good even stat just distribution across all of your different stats again Sargon I think is going to be the better choice here like if you came to this video looking for seven armies then you should be using Tarek. Okay. There's, there's no question here. I think the instant big skill shot is going to be better for you in the long run. And the, the damage output here is just going to be insane. Okay. Yes. All your stats are put on attack, but you probably have so many other stats from so many other places that it kind of makes up for that. Okay. So hopefully I've explained this portion of the video well enough to explain the distinction between these two and I think that both are actually really good options I think if you have the expertise Sargon or are a heavy investment in Sargon use it I think it's great I think this is actually the best pairing that Sargon's ever had with Luce right I think it makes a lot of sense there's a lot of synergy here but technically I would say 
technically my job in this video is to tell you the best options and I think you know my my next kvk is coming up I'm going to be experimenting with these two a lot and I think that I want to try the Tark. I think the Tark Luce is probably going to be the way to go for those really big fights okay so I'm gonna leave Sargon here to let you know that it is definitely a pairing that you can use but who are we gonna do for the fifth pair I think Hua William is is a slam dunk it's kind of a no-brainer at this point the Hua William is an exceptional pair now in the past I have said that the best pairing for Huo is Joan and that would mean that you would run something like this and the 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 truth is uh that the difference here isn't the Huo versus Nevsky really the difference is the William versus the Joan okay uh the Joan is just better than the William and in my last KVK I flipped these around back and forth and whichever pairing had the Joan performed better really that that's what it is it honestly I know that there's a lot of people that were, will argue the nuance here and they will argue the synergy but the truth is that in longer open field fights you're not going to notice the difference really when it when it when you compare the reports side by side okay whichever one has the Joan will probably perform slightly better so just do whatever you want if you don't want to separate your Nevsky Joan don't you don't have to it performs great run the Huo William and you'll be Gucci okay if you want your Huo to be a little bit more powerful and you want to flip them around you could do that too all right it doesn't really matter whichever one that you prefer I'm gonna leave it like this because I think a lot of people are going to run the Nevsky Joan I think it's people just don't want to split them up it's kind of like Juan Cipio they don't want to split them up totally get it you could definitely do that and this I think is the best five army lineup in Rise of Kingdoms I obviously we're running only one Archer March here okay so that's a little bit disappointing for the Archer mains I think this is the first time in a a long time that we've been seeing a two infantry lineup in a five army configuration I think it, it's been a really long time guys so it's really nice to see and I want to be clear here that this is in no particular order okay I'm not saying that the uh the Huo William is is five out of five like it's the worst of the five it's not okay it's not these are all really great armies in their own right you can you know ha whichever one has the best equipment is basically going to be the one that that performs the best out of everything that you see on the screen right here but how does this change when we talk about seven armies right and I know that you could run six right and I think that that's kind of niche I think if you're gonna start unlocking extra dispatches like you're probably gonna go to seven okay I don't know that many people that only run six always like usually you do five or seven right you're either buying for the kvk or, or you're kind of not so so what are you going to do for a seven army lineup well of course there's a couple of different options here okay and it really is going to come down to how you've been focusing your account if you've been focusing more on one troop type than another then you're going to be running more of those armies obviously right so at this point uh, i i don't know if you can really say that there is a best seven army lineup but we can come pretty close statistically okay obviously you're going to be running more than one archer ar army in my opinion I, I think you'd be insane not to do that there's a lot of aoe in, in archers and there's a lot of value there so why you wouldn't split up these two kind of makes no sense to me I think if you're going to do that you're gonna run the YSG with Boudicca I think that that's just the best strategy there I think Boudicca YSG still performs really well obviously you know before Juge Leong came into the game this was what people were running okay this is still a great pairing it's a little bit squishy so really you're gonna need some good gear but again we're talking about seven armies right like if you're watching up to this point of the video and, and you're running seven armies you probably have all golden gear for this okay and so you're good to go I think you're you're this is you're in great hands if you are an artemisia simp like me then you could do the Boudicca artemisia if you want to uh, I made a video a, a, a while ago at this point talking about which of these two is better as a secondary for Boudicca and I came to the conclusion that I, I would rather just run the YSG just keep it simple run the YSG it makes sense but I think it's at least worth mentioning artemisia here because this is like the only place you could even use her anyway at this point in rise of kingdoms but who are you going to be pairing with your Juge Leong I'm glad you asked you have two options you have Nebu or you have Henry now obviously there's a little bit of difference here Henry deals more single target damage but Nebu has AoE and that's pretty much the distinction of these two in my mind I think if you have the Henry expertise the benefit of going with Henry is the expertise is actually pretty tanky here as well as the buff that you get the skill damage taken reduction by 30 percent for five seconds really good stuff there okay now you do run a little bit short on the defense here but you also get some March speed outside of territory whereas Nebu has more defense but completely loses the attack and his March speed is not conditional okay so he actually is 
faster on your own territory but slightly slower on enemy territory i prefer this march speed over the march speed on henry but again he has overall less stats uh and the rage debuff is actually quite nice here so really it's just going to come down to your personal preference um if you can get the value out of the aoe for nebu use nebu if you find that you you know if you, if you even have the expertise henry and you find that you're getting swarmed down a ton and you want to keep your duge leong up as much as possible go at the Henry. I think both of these options are great choices. And then finally, who is the seventh army? Well, you have a couple of different options down here. And as you can see, we've got some candidates already showing. And I personally think that you're going to be running something with Zhang Yu. I think that that's just my personal opinion, whether you're a cavalry main and actually went all in on Justinian, like an absolute lunatic, you could do that. Okay. If you have the Honda, which I think more people will, then you could definitely do the Zhang Yu Honda and that would be good to go. You even could do the Minamoto here instead of the, uh, instead of the Justinian. I made a video talking about why I think Minamoto is better in the open field than Justinian. That's just my two cents. Okay. You can agree or not, but his relic is insane. The debuff on his fourth skill is insane. Lots of single target damage, just like Justinian. I think, you know, if you don't want to invest in Justinian, I think you'll get decent results out of the Minamoto, but realistically, um, probably it's going to be Honda. Okay. It's probably going to be Honda. It's probably going to be something like this. And you're going to be running three cavalry, two infantry, two archers. I bet you the cav mains watching don't know how to feel right now. Okay. Like they're happy that I still think that the three cav lineup is better than three of any other troop type, but they're probably pissed off about what I just said about Justinian. But listen, it is what it is. Okay. It is what it is. I honestly, I would say just keep it simple and just run the Honda. I would say just run the Honda. Just why not? Right. Just pump out that AOE. Just do it. it it's your seventh March. Right. And that's pretty much it. I think that is the best seven army lineup right now in rise of kingdoms for open field fighting. And now I would would like to take a moment to address a couple of other things okay obviously as you can see we have the Trajan ethel fled and this is a great option if you don't want to run the Zhang Yu with the Honda or if you just don't think you have a good pairing for your Zhang Yu or you don't have Zhang Yu whatever um then you don't you don't have to run that you can still run the Trajan ethel fled and your Gucci okay the problem and, and I think right now is actually the first time in a long time that we're starting to see people put Trajan on the bench and it's it's not that many right because we're talking about seven army lineups like there's just not that many people running seven army lineups like realistically I know you're watching this and you might be thinking oh everyone I know runs seven armies but like trust me bro people are, most people are not running five armies let alone seven okay but I think right now is the first time in a long time that we've even started considering removing Trajan from the seven armies because there's just so much DPS at this point right and this was a question that a lot of people had when Trajan first came into the game was do you run the Trajan or do you just run more damage right uh and I think that there was a lot of questions about that and as the game evolved Trajan found his home in the seven army lineup but at this point I think the damage output of these armies has gotten so high that I think it, it realistically probably outweighs the benefit you get from Trajan uh, I, I I really do I think the DPS like damage per second is the meta right now okay it used to be AoE but now it's damage per second it's just how much damage can you put out and that's why you see things like the Tarek Luce which a lot of people didn't really expect going into Luce's launch right they they thought okay well obviously Sargon uh, myself included right but really the meta is just damage per second that's it okay and and that's where the Trajan kind of and I'm not saying he's bad again I'm saying you can run him as your seventh if you don't want to run the Zhang Yu right that's totally fine but realistically I think there's just so much DPS right now that if you have seven armies worth of equipment you may consider benching the Trajan ethel flight okay if I had to guess I would say that that army is going to be used less and less over the course of the next six to 12 months and it's going to be in favor of some dps march in the seventh slot right now it happens to be zhang yu as calves but it could be just as easily anything else the other thing that we have to talk about is the gorgo right uh, gorgo just dropped uh, there's been some early test results coming out of her um and the reason that i didn't make a video about gorgo about her garrison testing or about her open field testing uh is because I, I felt like it was kind of obvious right like we, we kind of just like if you look at her kit you know she's going to be good in the garrison right she's 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 good and like you just kind of know she's not going to be good in the field right uh and that's not to say that you can't get good trades with her because if you look at her kit with the 900 rage requirements everything she does with the active skill plus a lot of the things that she does in her other skills don't require she be in a garrison when you take all that into account you would think 
that she would be really good in the open field and she is if you're pairing her with Liu Che and only if March speed is not a concern meaning that you are on kind of the defensive you're on the back foot the enemies are coming to you and you're not having to walk that far right then you could run the Liu Che Gorgo as one of your armies and you know you'll be fine with that I think it actually will perform really well in the open field but besides that niche scenario I think Gorgo is gonna kind of I mean the irony of you know having Leonidas's uh wife right here right the irony is that she's just too slow and that was the problem with Leonidas from the beginning right uh he was okay as a secondary but he just didn't have any March speed and because of that back in the day a lot of you might not remember this um, but the Guan Leo fell out of favor because it just was too slow right and I think Gorgo being the wife of Leonidas is ironic I think she's she suffers from the same downside that Leonidas suffers from and that is that she's just not gonna move bro she's too slow in the open field and remember what I said the meta is damage per second if you're walking to the battlefield your damage per second is zero okay so as as good as her kit is her use in the open field uh, is very niche it's with Liu Che it's when you're not moving much in a defensive position and that's pretty much it and if you have that amazing if you are an infantry garrison main and you're gonna get Gorgo anyway amazing you could do that but as uh, you know from my perspective I don't think that we're going to see Gorgo uh really used that much in the open fields uh from a mainstream thing right is she bad no but it, you know when when you look at the rest of the seven uh, six armies right seven armies um I just don't think she has a, a place in there in the seven army lineup and that's gonna do it those are the best three five and seven armies that you can be using in the open field right now in rise of kingdoms in my opinion now there's a lot of other questions that you could be asking like what are the best talent builds what are the best gear and things like that I will be releasing an updated gear guide once we have a better idea of how they're going to implement the next phase of the equipment system uh, I really just want to see it come in the game first before I make any more equipment guides I will say though that the horn and ring seem to be the best for basically every pairing okay if you want to just keep it simple you can run the ring of doom and the horn of fury on literally basically every March here and you'll be fine okay a lot of the other accessories are, are kind of falling to the wayside at this point it's 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 shocking but like that's like again DPS meta that's that's what we're in okay so ring and horn like that's that's the try uh, tried and true combo you could pretty much run that on everything so I will talk about that more in the future but for today these are the best armies that I think people can be running in rise of kingdoms and if you made it to the end of this video drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton and it helps get this video out into the YouTube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it comment down below what you think the best three five and seven army lineups are am I wrong let me know in the comments section below and while you're down there consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified the next time that I upload a rise of kingdoms video we are so close to 60,000 subscribers which is actually crazy so thank you to everyone who subscribed and if you think you're subbed you might not be just go ahead and check it down below with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace